Hi guys, my name is Daniel, and I am going to be doing an intro into Grasshopper. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to type in Grasshopper. I'm assuming that if you've come to this tutorial, you have a version of Rhino, and you have it open. If not, open it up and type in Grasshopper in the command line. Alright, so this is what the Grasshopper window looks like by default. This space over here is called your canvas, and anything you want to create has to be placed on here. So, there are several ways that we can work with Grasshopper. We could either create geometry in Rhino, like this polyline, or a cube. And then we can reference these into Grasshopper. So I'll grab a curve component and I will right click on it and set one curve and then select my polyline. I could also bring this box that I've created in as a, uh, as a BREP. A BREP stands for a boundary representation, which is just another name for a poly surface piece of geometry in Rhino. So I'll right click on BREP and set one BREP and click the box. Alright, that's one way to bring GR, work with geometry in Grasshopper. The other way is to create it entirely in Grasshopper. So any of these things that we drop down are called components. And we have different kinds of components. We have inputs and we have functions so one of the most useful components or one of the most useful functions that you always use in basically every definition is a number slider a number slider is basically just a value uh, a variable value so by default a slider fits between uh, zero units and one units but we can double click that and in here we can edit the slider. So maybe I will set my minimum value to negative 10. I'll set my maximum value to negative 10. And we also have the option of floating point parameter or floating point numbers, which are just decimal point numbers, integer numbers, so whole numbers, and even numbers and odd numbers. Alright, so I'm gonna keep it there between negative 10 and 10 at a decimal at a three decimal place value. Alright, so now I need to link this up to something. So maybe I'll create a point. So I'm going to go into the vector tab, grab a construct point node. So this here, this is called either a node, a battery, a component, or uh, there's probably a couple of other names for it that I'm not sure of. Um, so in it, so basically, this point. Is asking for three values an X a Y and a Z by default they are all zero so I can take this slider value and plug it into my X value and now if you watch in the right of viewport as I drag this slider back and forth you can see the geometry or the point geometry updating in real time which is one of the real beauties of grasshopper Everything is completely interactive 100% of the time. All right. um, another really useful component is called a panel. A panel can do several things. We can either use it as an input, so I'll double click the panel and I'll chuck in a number like 5.6. Doesn't matter what number you put in, but I can now plug that into my Y value and it has made a point at negative 10 in the x and 5.6 in the y. And once again, it's fully editable. Now, I tend not to use panels as inputs just because you can't edit them very easily. Um, or at least nowhere near as easily as a slider. So the other way that you can use a panel is to inspect the output. So if we connect this point into the panel, it gives us a bit of information. It tells us that we have a 
three, uh, it tells us that we have a point which has the values of negative 10 in the x, 0 in the y, and 0 in the z. And as we drag the slider back and forth, we can see the information updating on the slider, on the panel, and in the Rhino viewport. All right. So what could we do with this now? Maybe we'll uh, we'll make a copy of this point by like you can make copies of components by dragging them, tapping Alt once, and then releasing. And so now we have two points on the canvas. I'll uh, I'll right click on the X to disconnect my slider from there, and then I'll reconnect the slider to the Y component. And so now we have two points in our Grasshopper canvas. Um, and we can grab another panel to inspect what's coming out of the second point. And so you'll see it's basically the same, just the X and Y value have been switched. So as we slide the slider back and forth, we can see that geometry updating in the Rhino viewport. So now that I have two points, I could make a line between them. Um, if I wanted to make a line, now I might not know where to find a line component. So what I can do is I can double click on the canvas in order to search, and I will type in line. And as I and so now it brings up oh, a whole list of components that have the word line in them. And so we're going to go through and find one that we want. So the first component says contains a collection of line segments. It doesn't exactly sound helpful to us, but the second one says create a line between two points. And that's what we want to do. We want to make a line between the two points we have created. Um, and so now we'll connect the first point into input A and the second point into input B. And now we have created a line in Rhino. And you can see as I drag my slider back and forth, the geometry remains completely, uh, well, the geometry updates as I move the slider, it feeds from the slider into the points, into the line. And this is the basic workflow for Grasshopper. Um, as a side note, if you, ever, if you ever want to know where a component came from, because it's really useful just to sort of dive into these menus over here to really see what else there is available. You can hold Control, Alt, and then click on the component, and Grasshopper will show you exactly where it came from. So this line component came from the Curve menu, and under Curve Primitives, we have the line component right there. All right, so this has been the uh, intro into the basic Grasshopper user interface. We'll, uh, we'll step it up in the next lesson.